very important for us to realize you will lose you will suffer loss it is part of the plan of allah so prepare for that day how do i prepare allah says for as long as the families continued in iman we will connect them together on the other side they're going to come back together that's a gift of allah we are connected in this world do you think allah is not going to connect us in the hereafter are you prepared for that are you ready to adjust are you ready to calm down you lost a loved one what do you do inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiu first things first i must declare that i belong to allah that person or that thing i lost belongs to allah and everything is going to return to allah that's your declaration Thereafter, what must happen? Life and death is in the hands of Allah. Allah is the giver of life and Allah is the one who decides when a person is going to pass away. And indeed, if Allah wills, something is brought into life. Innama amruhu idha arada shay'an an yaqula lahu kun fayakunu fa subhana alladhi biyadihi malakutu kulli shay' wa ilayhi turja'oon. Amazing last verse of Surah Yasin. Allah says, when Allah would like to create something, His instruction is simply be and it is so glory be to the one in whose hands lies the ownership and dominion of absolutely everything and it will all return to Allah and this is why when a person goes through difficulty and hardship the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him at any loss that you've suffered be it material loss the loss of life health some bad news etc we are taught as a sunnah to say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun we belong to allah and we are going to return to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of us as a reminder to say nothing is going to last long nothing is going to last beyond the decision of allah when allah decides this is the time that is the time and there is another important factor that we need to know everything that is created by allah has an expiry date meaning it has a time tag there is a tag of the precise time that that thing will come to an end all the creatures of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not just humankind and this is why allah says إِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ فَلَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ Subhanallah. If the time comes, if their time, whose time, whether it was the previous nations or whether it was any other creature of Allah, when the fixed time set by Allah comes, they will not be able to delay it by a moment, nor will they be able to bring it forward by a moment. It's Allah's decision, not yours, not mine. Now, the reason I make this introduction is because it is very important, my brothers and sisters, as mu'mineen and believers, that we prepare for the day we are going to lose people around us and things that we have and items that we've known and so much more. More. It is very important for us to realize you will lose, you will suffer loss. It is part of the plan of Allah. So prepare for that day. How do I prepare? By building my faith in Allah, building my yaqeen, my conviction in Allah, by trying to understand part of the plan of Allah. We will never know the wisdom of Allah in everything. One day he may tell us in the hereafter, but in this life, you might not understand why did I lose a child at such an innocent age? Why did I have to lose a spouse? Why did I have to lose a parent? Why did I have to lose so and so? Why did my job uh, why did I lose it? Why did I lose my, my wealth, for example? You might not know. And who knows? If you live long enough, Allah might show you a little bit of why it happened. You suffered a huge loss. As a direct result of that loss, you made gains 10 times more five years later. What was that? It took you five years of stress to realize the gift of Allah? Did you not have enough Iman and Yaqeen, faith and conviction to believe this is the plan of Allah? <laughs> so many times we are taught, and here is a powerful narration I'm sure we've heard before, the affairs of a true believer are amazing. What are they? They are always good for you. It cannot be bad. Are you a believer? Yes, then nothing is bad for you. You bear sabr when something negative happens according to worldly standards, and you bear and you thank Allah when something good happens according to 
worldly standards. Why do I say worldly standards? The reason is simple. Something that happens that you think is good for you according to the standards of the world is not necessarily good for you in the eyes of Allah. Not every time you gain something according to you is it actually gaining. And sometimes when you lose something according to you, it's not always bad for you. Subhanallah, this is Allah's plan. So what is the test? The test is no matter what has happened to you, if it brings you closer to Allah, it was your gift. And if it takes you away from Allah, it was your punishment or it was something, a challenge, a test for you and you're failing it because it's drifting you away from Allah. As soon as you hear of the death of a loved one, the closest person to you, you have to lose them. There's no way out. Think about it. And by thinking about it, it's not in order to depress yourself. It's in order to strengthen your faith in Allah. What will you do? It's going to be a tough one. Or they might lose you before the other way around. Could happen. One of the two has. What will you do at the time? Yes, it's going to hurt. Are we allowed as believers to hurt? Yes, you are. We are normal. We're human beings. You are a human being. You will cry. You will feel the pain. You will be sad. It will hurt you, but not beyond the point. It will not lead you to questioning Allah. It will not lead you to becoming a person despondent who turns away from prayer. In fact, it is only the remembrance of Allah that will calm your heart. <laughs> True believers achieve the comfort of their hearts by the remembrance of Allah. For indeed it is only the remembrance of Allah that can comfort the hearts of the true believers. There's nothing else. You want to comfort your heart? Turn to Allah. There's no other way because Allah is the maker. He knows. So when you suffer a loss, like I said, prepare for the day you will lose what you have. Allahu Akbar. Prepare for it. Even if it does not come, at least you know your Iman, your Yaqeen is such that you know Allah can do whatever He wants. It's not in my hands, it's in Allah's hands. The reason why we say prepare for the day is because if we have not thought about it, and we did not prepare for it. The day it comes, it's going to knock us out totally. But prepare for it, inshallah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Inna lillahi ma akhada wa lahu ma a'ta. Wa kullu shay'in indahu bi ajalim musamma. Whatever Allah gave me in the first place always belonged to Him. Imagine you lose a child, infancy, teenage, post, healthy, suddenly something went wrong. Whatever, according to you, according to Allah, it went right. That child was never yours before birth. Where were they? You were busy crying. Oh Allah, give me children. Where did that child come from? Allah. Where is that child going? Back to Allah. Think about it. You could lose one, two or all. It's tough. It will be a sad day. Indeed, we may cry. The heart might be saddened. Yes, indeed, but not beyond the point. We will still say, La naqulu illa ma yurdi Allah Azza wa Jal. We will only say, we will not say anything except that which pleases Allah. If you want to question Allah, there are two different angles you could look at it from. One is to question Allah's authority. That is wrong. We are mu'mineen, we are believers, we surrender to Allah. But one is to question what might have gone wrong with us for Allah to have done something to us so that we can improve ourselves as a result of it. That's not actually questioning Allah as such. It's questioning yourself. Where have I gone wrong? That more so when you suffer a loss materially in your health, in a few other things, you say, Oh Allah, where did I go wrong? Subhanallah, improve yourself. And that's why we say when anything negative happens and brings you close to Allah, that's it. My brothers, my sisters, when we say surrendering to the plan of Allah is a gift. Wallahi, it's a gift. You have travel plans. It has happened to many of us during the virus. You have travel plans and suddenly you are stuck. You cannot go. You tested positive, whatever it might have been. If you're a believer, you're calm. I have my place. I have my food. I'm okay. I'm just here. In our language, I'm chilling. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. The same person could be so depressed because they're angry. When can I go? What can I do? What plan can I, etc, etc. Not anger. We try to resolve the matter indeed. But in the interim, we are happy, excited. You missed a flight. Thank Allah. Something negative happened. Thank Allah. You are a believer unlike the others. You tried your best, didn't you? Now what happened? Don't worry. That's Allah's plan. Allah knows what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs>
It was always Allah's plan. He knew you were never going to make it to that thing. He was just subhanallah allowing you to rush towards it and it wasn't going to come to you. That's Allah's plan. Will you surrender and say Alhamdulillah lak alhamdi ya Allah. For you belongs all thanks and all praise. You will become because your health is affected negatively. When you begin to stress about things that are not in your hands. When you begin to worry about something that Allah did not put in your hands. You are worried about it. It's not in your hands. Leave it to Allah. That's the whole idea of tawakkul. To hand over your affairs to Allah and trust Him. It's over. What can I do? Zero. A person is diagnosed with whatever disease. Someone says this is terminal. Alhamdulillah, I'm going to try. We will get this type of help and that type of help. But if it doesn't help, what's the ultimate that could go wrong? In inverted commas, a person can die. Is that really the ultimate? Or is that the beginning of a new stage of a beautiful life? So you've lost a loved one. Guess what? You're a believer. You're going to meet them again very soon. Very soon. How soon? Sooner than you can imagine. Isn't that a bonus? Allahu Akbar. What a great gift of Allah. Allah says, those who believe. Allah says, for as long as the families continued in Iman, we will connect them together on the other side. They're going to come back together. That's a gift of Allah. We are connected in this world. Do you think Allah is not going to connect us in the hereafter? The same Lord who connected you here, you want to be connected there, He will connect you. So don't depress because a believer knows there is a life after death. We are too sophisticated in creation for it to be the end of everything. You live and it, that's it. The Kuffar used to say, it's only this worldly life. It's we are just, you know, dead and alive. That's it. You're just living for this life. That's it. Allah says, no way. You are so sophisticated. You have feelings. I know you. You know me. We'd like to sit. We haven't had the time. I don't worry. You'll get the time. Just believe. Allah will grant you that time. Even later on, there's a lot of time. Subhanallah. This world is temporary. It has challenges. My brothers, my sisters, every time you have a gift of Allah, the back of your mind, while you are thanking Allah for it, remember, Allah not only can take it away, a day will come when He will take it away as a challenge. Are you prepared for that? Are you ready to adjust? Are you ready to calm down? You lost a loved one. What do you do? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiyo. First things first. I must declare that I belong to Allah. That person or that thing I lost belongs to Allah and everything is going to return to Allah. That's your declaration. Thereafter, what must happen? Istiqama. I must remain steadfast. Fulfill your prayers. It will help the deceased. If you are a child of that deceased, for you to pray for them. In what way? Just simply asking Allah, Oh Allah, forgive my father, forgive my brother, forgive my child, forgive my spouse, forgive whoever it may have been. Grant them Jannah and have mercy on them. That type of a dua, even though it is so simple, is probably one of the most powerful gifts you could give the deceased. That type of a dua, even though so simple, is probably the best gift you could give them. Repeat it and repeat it again and again after every prayer. Fulfill your prayers. Learn to dress modestly, appropriately. Learn to carry yourself in a proper away what are you doing you are continuing after them with iman then allah connects you later on and you life must carry on how many times you have a person who passes on and the wife or the husband or someone says you know what that's it i'm calm here and i'm never gonna marry again that's your statement because of the loss but that's Allah's plan. You're not the first person and you will not be the last person. A year passes, two years pass, four years, five years pass, and you begin to yearn for companionship once again. There is no betrayal of your deceased spouse if you were to remarry. No, not at all. No betrayal whatsoever. It's the plan of Allah. They have done it before you. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, married those who lost their spouses before. So there is no betrayal. Don't let someone fool you to say, no, you're betraying your deceased spouse. Imagine he'll come in your dreams and haunt you. That's what people say. Hey, what did you do? No, that's not happening. May Allah Almighty grant us ease, forgiveness. My brothers, my sisters, in a, same, in a similar fashion, when we've been given a gift by Allah, whether it is a business, a prophet, a beautiful home, a lovely condition, one day Allah has to shake it for you. He has to shake that tree for all those dead leaves to fall down. And what happens? New leaves begin to blossom with Iman. Strength. Be strong. Be strong. You might cry. You might shed a tear. You are a human. No problem. For as long as those are tears that are not questioning Allah, but rather showing the helplessness of man in front of Allah. No harm. The Prophet ﷺ's eyes filled with 
tears when he lost his son Ibrahim. And he said, Innama hiya rahmatun. This is a sign of the mercy that Allah has placed in the hearts of those who have mercy. So my brothers, my sisters, these are a few words I thought I'd share with you today because people lose things and then it, it actually shakes their belief in Allah. Whereas it should strengthen you. That was the plan of Allah. From the beginning, He told you that I will take things away. I'll give you things. It's part of the plan of Allah. Sometimes, you see, there was a time when the old pass on and the young inherit them and continue until they become old. They pass on and their young ones inherit them. Now, we are living in an age where it's the other way around or it is unpredictable. Totally. Not like it wasn't un unpredictable before, but the world has changed to the degree that you hear of young people passing on before the old a lot of the time. That's all part of the plan of Allah. It can happen. Just bear it in the back of your mind. That's all. To say this can happen. If it does happen, I will surrender to the decree of Allah as difficult as it may be. And you know what? Initially, when you lose a loved one within your family, yes, everyone will come home. They will talk to you. They will comfort you and so on. It won't really hit you so much because that's too close to home. A few days later, a few weeks later, when everyone has gone back to work and you're sitting all on your own, it starts hitting you. If you don't have Iman that we're talking about today, faith and conviction, it's going to knock you out. Build your faith, build your conviction. Have faith in Allah. You know, the morning time in Islam is limited. Beyond that, please move on with life. Continue. Go ahead. And as much as you may cry from time to time and it may be difficult, it will be tough. A few days will be worse than others. No problem. But in general, you'll be moving closer to Allah. You get closer to Allah. Such that that loss, had it not been for the loss, you wouldn't have been so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah Almighty grant us all ease and comfort. And ultimately, may He help us go through our challenges and difficulties in a way that we earn closeness to Him and a reward so that we earn Jannatul Firdaus without reckoning. For indeed, again, my brothers and sisters, when you surrender to the decree of Allah, it is one of the highest and closest levels that you could arrive at to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's called a rida bil qada. To be happy at the decree of Allah. That's not a joke. That's very difficult. Happy at the decree of Allah. Yes, when Allah gives you a million, another million, another to show happiness is easy. Hey, rida bil qada. I'm happy. I got a million. I got two million. Wait until it's the other way around. That's what we talk about. Rida bil qada. May Allah make it easy for you and I the day he tests us and a beautiful dua. May Allah never test us with that which is too difficult for us to go through. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Hope this video was helpful for you. This may help others too. So please consider sharing and we will bring more videos in the future inshallah. So consider subscribing and you won't miss any. Jazakallah khairan.